In this video, I'm going to talk about two interesting matches from today's French Open. You got Anna versus Sharapova and Erotic versus Gabashvili. And then towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about how you can win a tennis racket during the final of the French Open. Now, let's start with the Anna Sharapova match. We'll put Maria up here and Justine down here. And this was kind of a strange match, but I thought an intriguing match because at the, first, at the beginning of the match, in the first set, you had Maria who was a little bit off. Her game wasn't quite there. She was leaving the ball short in this area of the court, and Enna was playing well. She was standing up on the baseline, taking the ball early. She was hitting her spots well, running Sharapova around the court, and Sharapova couldn't find the range, she, and she couldn't get the ball deep. And particularly on a day like today, when it was cold, it was wet, and the court was really taking a lot of pace out of the ball. You leave it short, that allowed Enna to stand up and really control the action, really dictate play. So the first set wasn't really close. It was 6-2, I believe. And then in the second set, you had a situation where Sharapova started to play better. She started to get better depth on her ground strokes. They were landing closer to the baseline. That pushed Enna back a little bit. And it also prevented Enna from controlling the action. If she's standing further back, deeper balls, she's not going to be able to hit her spots as well. And it allowed Maria to step up. And, you know, the, the conditions certainly prevented Maria from hitting through the court as much as she would like. But when, when she was able to get better depth and push Enna back, well, Enna had to hit longer to get the ball back to the baseline. And then with the court taken away, a lot of the ball's pace... Maria now had time, once she found the range, to hit her shots and take control of a lot of the action. So the conditions, in a way, once she got better depth, played a little bit into what Maria was trying to do, and it certainly allowed Maria to set up for her big ground strokes. Now, the other interesting thing was how Maria, not, well, how Maria competed was not interesting. Maria Sharapova is one of the best competitors on the women's tour. You've got Serena and I would certainly put Maria up there as well. And Sharapova faced some break points, which probably would have resulted, if she had gotten broken, she would have lost the match. And she did some interesting stuff on those break points. Now, what she did was she served out wide kick serve, which was a little bit interesting, considering that Sharapova tip typically doesn't have a ton of spin on her serves. And in fact, they're relatively flat, and she hasn't been serving particularly well. She's been injured, and she's been, been trying to build that shot back up. So she was double faulting earlier in the match. She certainly, her serve has been sort of intermittent. But she hit a kick, she would hit some kick serves out here. And Enna moved out, hit a return cross court. And what Sharapova did was she hit a couple drop shots, some really well hit drop shots that Enna was not able to get to. And the reason Enna wasn't able to get, to get to these balls was because of the depth, again, that depth that Sharapova was hitting with in the second set. Because what happens, what a player is thinking, a pro player, when they get pulled off the court on a wide serve, they want to get it back deep, but then they're going to anticipate not being in the best position. They're going to anticipate probably being on defense, at best a neutral rally. So they're going to be recovering back, but they're going to give themselves some distance behind the baseline to track a lot of balls down, particularly when they're anticipating deep balls like Maria was hitting in the second set. So Enna might be saying to herself, I'm anticipating a well-struck ball down the line. I need to back up to give myself time to get to that. Well, Sharapova knows that, and she hit some great shots, some great drop shots to capitalize on the fact that Enna was backing up to give herself a little bit more time. So it was a really nice curveball that Sharapova threw in there. Enna wasn't expecting it. I wasn't expecting it, to be honest. I was really surprised. Surprised, But the reason it worked is because she was getting good depth on her ground strokes, and Enna was pushed back further behind the baseline, but, and she wasn't expecting this at all. Now, there's a different video we produced. I believe it was a webcast where I talked about some of the criteria for an effective drop shot. So if you want to uh, hear a little bit more about what, you know, a good situation to hit a drop shot, what you should sort of be looking at when you're deciding to hit that shot, uh, check out one of our earlier webcasts. So this match is 
it's not over. It's going to be completed tomorrow. Uh, I believe it's the second match on. It's tied at a set apiece. Interestingly, you know, Sharapova goes on to win that second set, and then the ref comes out and says, do you guys want to keep playing? It's getting dark. Anna wanted to stop, and that makes perfect sense. She just lost the set. Momentum was not on her side, and her forehand, well, for a righty, her forehand was completely off. So I, I get why she wanted to go into the locker room. But Sharapova, she has the momentum. She's playing well. She's hitting the ball deep. She seemed to be serving all right at that point in the match. Why would you want to get off court? I wasn't exactly sure why she wanted to uh, suspend the match to the next day. Her coach was telling her, get off the court, get off the court. So I found that a little bit interesting, just given the dynamics and the flow of the match at, um, you know, at that particular junction. But this will be resolved tomorrow. I think, you know, if I had to, if I had to put money on it, I think you got to go with Enna. I mean, Maria's given up the advantage uh, in terms of the momentum. Enna is a better clay court player, just historically. I mean, I think that's obvious. And if her forehand's back, then she's, uh, you know, she'll probably be able to do some damage. Uh, and, you know, the question is, is Maria's level going to be as high as it was in the second set coming right out of the gate in that third set? So there's some question marks there. I expect Enna to, uh, to take that match. Now, if we transition, we also had the erotic Gabashvili match. And this match, in a lot of respects, was similar to the Enna Sharapova match. I'm not going to try and spell Gabashvili, so I'll put a G down there. Um, I'm just happy I can sort of pronounce his name probably somewhat close to accurately. Um, I'm notorious, notoriously bad at pronouncing uh, names. So we've got A-Rod up here, and we've got Gabashvili. And this, as Roddick said, from point one was Gabashvili in control of this match. And the same way that Sharapova was hitting short to start, so was Roddick. Balls were landing short around the service line, maybe a little bit past. But Roddick wasn't able to correct this. And Gabashvili can rip the ball. He's got long strokes, big strokes. In some respects, he's similar to Soderling. Well, given the conditions today where Roddick really couldn't hit through the court, Gabashvili had time, he was able to set up, he was able to get through his mechanics comfortably, and he was pounding the ball much deeper, getting it much closer to the baseline, much deeper than Roddick was. So Gabashvili was able to stand up on Roddick's ground strokes, and Roddick wasn't. He was pushed back, and this dynamic never changed. So this is why Roddick basically got destroyed. I mean, it was 4-4-2. Four, four, and two. It wasn't a close match. Roddick served a very high first serve percentage, but only won about 63% of his first serves, which is an incredible stat. So it just goes you to show how Gabashvili was not only controlling most rallies, but the conditions were just really sapping the power out of Roddick's serve, more so than they normally do. So Gabashvili was able to get his teeth into more of Roddick's service games. So tomorrow, like I said earlier, you've got Enna and Sharapova finishing that match. Again, I expect Enna to win. You also have some other, obviously, big-name players. you got Federer in there. you got Murray. you got an interesting match between Marin Cilic and Robin Soderling. I'm really looking forward to that one. So there's a, there's a lot of good stuff on tap for tomorrow. And please, if you are free tomorrow at 5 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, visit our website, fuzzyyellowballs.com, for our live webcast recapping all the action. And during that webcast, we give away a bunch of free stuff. Today we gave away an Andy Roddick. Uh, rookie card that he has autographed valued at about 100 bucks, And for the French Open final, which is at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, doesn't matter really what time it is because we are going to be broadcasting live during the final. So wherever you are in the world, tune into our website. Again, fuzzyyellowballs.com. During the match, we will be broadcasting live, just like we've been doing at 5 o'clock Eastern for our webcasts. And during that match, we are going to give away a tennis racket and some other cool stuff. So there's a lot of stuff you can win. And of course, the webcast is a lot of fun. We got that chat box going so we can interact. I can diagram important plays on the dry erase board. So really looking forward to that, to that next Sunday. And I, of course, will be doing more dry erase board videos like this. So I look forward to that, and I look forward to talking to you all soon. Did you know that there are only five simple things you need to do to have a textbook forehand like Roger Federer? If you click the link in the description of this video and visit our website, you'll learn why Federer's forehand is so good and how you can copy his technique. And this entire 45-minute lesson is 100% free. 
Join the thousands who have already learned what these five simple things are and take control of your forehand today.